guys, and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Reviews. Today, I thought I would bring you kind of a different kind of video, and video that when I thought of, I thought would be really kind of fun. Now, I'm pretty sure I got all of them, but I could have missed a couple of them, but I figured we'd do a fun little video, and it's going to be all of the celebrity perfumes in my collection that are named after songs, lyrics, albums, whatever have you. Um, I do have quite a bit here. There is, um no particular order to this it's kind of just randomly this is like the fifth time i filmed this video we're not even going to get into all the technical difficulties i've had trying to film this video but hopefully this time will be a little bit better hopefully you guys like i did do a little bit of a different um kind of change the way that the camera sits and all that kind of stuff and i'm going to be doing a little bit of a different editing to this so i hope you guys do enjoy this new kind of little bit of a difference if you do please let me know and i'll continue to record and do things in the way that i'm doing them currently um, going along with this, because these are named after songs and whatever, I do actually have a playlist. So, um, I'm gonna figure out how to share it, and I'll put the link in the description below. And if I can figure out how to put, like, a little, uh, thing on the screen to, like, show you guys, I will. But I did do a little playlist, and it's called Smell My Perfume. If I can get it to focus on that. Um, and it is a Spotify-only playlist, but it is what it is for now. So, like I said, no particular order to this. We're just going to kind of dive right in. The first one I want to do is kind of the one that started my entire collection, kind of. Um, the first one that came before this is really what started my collection. But this is the one I chose named after the fragrance because um, it is more named after the fragrance, or named after the song, not the fragrance, than the original one is just because of the added name. And that is Wonderstruck Enchanted by Miss Taylor Swift. Um, so I chose Wonderstruck Enchanted because the song is Enchanted and the lyric is, um, I was Wonderstruck blushing all the way home. This is a, uh, kind of musky sugared berry scent, perfect for the fall time. Um, and I do feel like this does match the song because it does kind of have a sparkling prettiness to it. Um, and that is kind of what Enchanted is about, is being sparkling and pretty. The next Taylor Swift one, and I'm going to try to keep these together by the artists that they are. Um, the next Taylor Swift one is, of course, Made of Starlight. So this one actually played music when you um, opened the music box that it came in. This is a very um, sparkling, lightly floral pretty scent. It does have very reminiscence to Justin Bieber's The Key, but it is still slightly different. Um, does fit Starlight from Red very, very well. It is very effervescent, very pretty, very sparkling, very kind of what you would think like falling in love would smell like. Um, perfect for the summertime. Like, I feel like song is, you know, very summer. I met Bobby on the boardwalk summer of 45, so, you know, that's what that is. Next one is um, Incredible Things by Miss Taylor Swift. And this is named after the song off of 1989, um, Blank Space, with the lyric, Nice to meet you, where you've been, I could show you incredible things. So, watercolor bottle, I think it's super, super pretty. Um, this fragrance does have a modern twist on an 80s fragrance. So I do feel like it fits the song and the overall album of 1989 very well, because it is a song, or it is an album, that is kind of like a 1980s synth pop, modernized. So... Next in, we're going to talk about just kind of some singular ones, and we have, first up, One Direction's You and I. Um, again, another kind of sparkling, pretty floral, fruity scent. It doesn't, it isn't the same as, um, um, Taylor Swift's Taylor by Taylor Made of Starlight. This is a little muskier, a little warmer, but this one is still very, very pretty. Um, and does have kind of like, the boys have a deeper voice than Taylor, um, and the song is a little bit slower and not as upbeat, and I do feel like that fits the song as well, very well. Um, next up, we'll talk about the, one of the newest fragrances to my collection, if it'll focus, thank you, and that is Dolly by Miss Dolly Parton. So this is t technically also called the Scent From Above, um, and she did kind of the reverse of this, so there's a song called Scent From Above, but they changed the play on the word. So this is, you know, like, scent of ab from above, and that is, like, scent from above. So S-C-E-N-T, and, and like, S-N-S-E-N-T. Like, anyway. So this, I do feel like, has a very church lady scent, but also I feel like it smells exactly what Dolly Parton would smell like. This is 
slightly musky, slightly dated, um, a little bit mature. Not saying that any of those are bad descriptors. Just saying that this definitely does smell like uh, what your favorite church lady and what you think Dolly Parton would smell like. It does kind of have that like Coco uh, Mademoiselle kind of vibe to it as well. Um, but it's very, very pretty, very sandalwood, patchouli. I do, it is a very pretty scent, not something I personally would wear a whole lot. But I do feel like it fits the song because it's kind of like a gospel-y, churchy song. Um, what other one offers do we have? We have With Love by Hilary Duff. Um, so, oh, let's focus on the bottle and not on whatever you're trying to focus on. Hello? Yeah, no, you're right here. Auto-focusing is fun. There we go, with love, Hilary Duff. So this is a unique scent, especially um, in the realm of celebrity fragrances. Not saying for a celebrity scent, because you call these all know I hate that scent, but a lot of the celebrity scents are a little bit more mass appealing, and I don't feel like this one is as mass appealing. It's a little bit more unique, a little bit different. For some reason, this always reminds me of eucalyptus and koalas. Even though eucalyptus isn't a freaking note in this, it just makes me think of eucalyptus for some reason. And it is kind of a little sultry, a little sexy, a little out there and dark. And so I do feel like this fits the song as well because it, um, especially in the music video, she's kind of like running around and being very secretive. So I do feel like With Love by Hilary Duff fits the song. Um, let's talk about the queen herself real quick, Miss Britney Spears. First up, we'll talk about Circus Fantasy, um, named after the album of Circus and brought into her fantasy realm of fragrances. This is a candied, beautiful scent. It's got a little bit of a floral, fruity back, but definitely a very candy-esque and definitely does fit the theming of a circus. Um, a little bit uh, more fun and brighter than some of her darker fragrances that were released before this. And the same with the album. A little bit brighter and funner than compared to the darker edge that Blackout was. I do really, really like this one. This one is some one of my personal favorites from the Fantasy line. Um, and I do feel like if it's the song and the album of Circuits very well just because it does um, land in that realm of kind of like a fruity, poppy, candy-esque scent. Um, next we'll talk about Prerogative, which is named after the song that she covered, which was a Bobby Brown song, which is My Prerogative, which was named for her, um, let's think of words, Greatest Hits album, um, where she covered the song. This song has, or the song, this scent has a very interesting latex edge to it that I think is very interesting and very different. Kind of comes off Play-Doh-y sometimes in a way, but and it, it overall is very pretty. Um, it's supposed to be unisex, but I don't really see it being unisex. But also, people don't really see that song being a unisex song. So that kind of fits it as well. Um, a little bit different from a lot of Britney's fragrances, and the song itself was a little bit different. So I feel like that one fits as well. Not all these fit, I will say that. The, there are some that I'm like, mm, no. Um, next up, we'll talk about Private Show. So I do feel like this fits the overall vibe of Private Show very well. The song is very sexy, very sultry, and this is a very sexy, sultry scent, um, especially with that coffee note in there. And then there's kind of that, that breakdown in the middle of it where she's like, work it, work it, boy, what? In, anyway, VIP Private Show is definitely the remix part. Not the remix, but that kind of like breakdown part. So I feel like the combining of these two songs represents the scent, or represents the song very well. Um, especially with the little breakdown in there. Um, next up, we'll talk about a song, or a perfume that was named after a song, but wasn't, again, necessarily their song to begin with. And that is Killer Queen. So this is named after Queen's um, hit Killer Queen and what Katy Perry envisioned that the woman that Freddie Mercury had written the lyrics envisioning um, This does have a kind of Very dark esque to it Barry B-E-R-R-Y not very dark as very dark as um, This is just really pretty. I like this. It does kind of have a sultry sexy edge to it I do feel like it was a little bit heavier I wish like it had a little bit of leather in it maybe some gunpowder just because those are notable things from the song um, I also just feel like it would be a little bit sexier and I feel like that woman was very sexy that he was describing this fits it but not quite to the T that I'm thinking in my head um, next we'll talk about miss 
we'll hop into the Mariah Carey's. Why not? So first up with Mariah Carey, we'll talk about Honey. So this named after her song Honey, um, and I feel like this fits the name of a fragrance, Honey, more than it fits the song. Um, it does kind of, it's a little more uplifting and effervescent and pretty than I think that it would be for the song, the song being a little bit more sultry. This has a honey edge to it. It does smell like honey. Um, it just, it fits the name of the name of the fragrance, not the song as much. Um, next up is Mine Again, which is this one, and it is the dark red one. So this has a really pretty berries and like dark chocolate note to it. It has some blood orange and red currant on top. I do have the notes for these written down just because there are so many of them. Um, there's cotton candy, there's dark chocolate. It just doesn't, this one doesn't quite fit the song. It has this beat throughout the bottom of it that I feel like fits another song a lot more. And it just isn't quite what I was thinking for mine again. I feel like two songs could have swapped and they could have been excellent representations of each other for that, like that particular song. Um, is this the next one I want? No, this is. I have them in order on my little sheet. These are in kind of order. Not in like a favorite or non-favorite order. But this is Ribbon. This is got Cucumber, Raspberry, Melon. Um, I like this one. It's very pretty. I just don't feel like it fits the song Ribbon at all. Um, a lot of, unfortunately, Mariah Carey's scents don't personally feel like they fit the songs very well. And the fragrances themselves don't really do a whole lot. They don't really change a whole lot. They're not the biggest, like, I kind of expected more from a lot of these fragrances. Um, next up is Inseparable, and this is the one I feel like should switch places with mine again. This is very pretty, and not what I'm thinking, especially with that iconic bass line that is an Inseparable, um, for it to smell like. Um, next is my personal favorite, That Chick by Mariah Carey. The, the the notes of this fragrance are beautiful, and of course it's the one that she released in the smallest, tiniest little bottle. This is guava, black currant, green apple, um, jasmine, grapefruit, peony, vanilla, white musk, sandalwood. I love this fragrance. It smells so good, and I do feel like the that chick would smell like this, like the song that chick and what the the girl you know it would fit definitely. Next up, vision of love. This one is super, super pretty. Um, just not what I was thinking again for the song. It's not as, it's again too bubblegum poppy pretty from Mariah. And a lot of her songs are more sultry and sexy, especially with her voice. I feel like they could be, these songs could be, this, the fragrances could have more depth to them and they might fit the song some more. And then we have Never Forget You. This scent has been borderline for me for so long. I really like it, it's just there's some notes in here that I just can't vibe with, and that's so, so hard for me to, like, just mesh, just because of those. Um, I do wish that a lot of Mariah's scents fit her songs better, just because she does have so many that are named after songs. Next, we'll talk about one that's named after an album, and that is Pink Friday by Miss Nicki Minaj. So this one I kind of had a little fun with. This is, you know, a little fun, this is Vivo Juicy kind of vibes. People have also compared it to Someday by Justin Bieber. I don't necessarily see those both comparisons, but I have seen other people compare them that way. Um, I see a little bit closer to Justin Bieber Someday than I do Viva La Juicy, but nonetheless, it has, this is berries, musk, and caramel with some slight florals in there. That is the Viva La Juicy DNA. So this is kind of a way of Viva La Juicy, but not the same at the same time. But I do feel like this fits the standard edition of Pink Friday very, very well. While some of the songs that they added and did for the deluxe version do fit the deluxe fragrance very well. I picked a song off of the standard and the deluxe version to represent both very well. Because they both do have the same notes. Like this does have the exact same notes as this one. But they rearranged the notes and the concentrations in this one to be a little bit different so that you could smell them. They would be different, and they're very, very different fragrances, trust me. Deluxe Edition's a little bit spicy, a little bit darker, and I feel like those songs are a little bit spicy and a little bit darker. Um, and then there is Pink Print, which is very similar to um, Miami Glow and um, Maui Fantasy by uh, 
Britney Spears and J-Lo, respectively. Um, but it has a similar vibe to Incredible Things, but Incredible Things isn't quite the same as this. But this is kind of a beachy, coconutty type scent, and I do feel like it's a little bit different from all the other Nikki scents, and I do feel like the pink print is a little bit different from everything else that Nikki's ever released. Um, and then there is one song that's kind of related, and that's Trini Them Girls for the fragrance Trini Girl. Um, this is reminiscent of her native country of Trinidad, and it does have the... Um, I don't remember the exact name for it. I'll pop it in here with the notes. But the Trinidadian National Flower is like a very prominent note in this fragrance. And it makes it very unique and very different. And I feel like the most untalked about fragrance in Nikki's lineup. I would love to see more people talk about her. Just because I feel like things like um, Onika and Menagesty, Menagesty Exotic. And other things get a little bit more love than she does. So I would love to see people's opinions on her. And then the final Nikki fragrance that is named after is of course Queen and her most recent album named Queen. Um, definitely a little bit more mature, a little bit darker of a fragrance and definitely a more mature album from Nikki. So definitely feel like those two go hand in hand. Of course, we can't talk about fragrances named after songs and lyrics without talking about Miss Ariana Grande. Sweet Like Candy named after the lyric in the song Moonlight. This is Sweet Like Candy, but he's just a man and yeah, um, men like sexy sweet, sex, sexy sweet candy type fragrances. It's been kind of statistically proven. So I do feel like, you know, trying to entice a man. Yes, this does smell like that. Um, but it, it definitely fits the lyric, but the overall song, I don't feel like matches the fragrance. The song is a little, very dreamy, very pretty, very like effervescent. And I don't feel like this is, um, as pretty and as dreamy as it could be. Um, I do feel like it should be a little bit more lavender heavy and um, a little bit like effervescent to be more dreamy in my opinion. We also have REM which is um, gonna be kind of controversial when I say this but this fragrance is kind of a repeaty type fragrance. Um, it is similar to Thank You Next and Thank You Next 2.0 Oh, not, sorry. Thank you, Next and Cloud. Um, but I feel like it matches the song because, like, the song repeats itself, if you've ever heard R.E.M. Um, but I do feel like this matches because it's repetitive and, yeah, I'm just gonna stop. Anyway, next we'll talk about Thank You, Next and Thank You, Next 2.0. So, I don't like Thank You, Next, the original one. Don't really like the song Thank You, Next. It's a good song, but we've heard it. It gets old. This is just, it just gets old. There's something in this I don't like, and we've already smelled this. It was cloud. It's just cloud a little bit different, and I'm not there for it. Now, Thank You Next 2.0. It definitely represents the album as a whole. It, I'm not a huge fan of the song, but I'm a huge fan of this fragrance, and i um, huge fan of the album. So, this definitely fits the overall, you know, it's a perfect pop album, and I feel like this is a perfect poppy fragrance. Um... Next up, we'll talk about these ones, and then I'm done. This one, okay, God is a Woman. Definitely, um, very pretty, very, I feel like it fits the nature-esque vibe of what they were going for more than it fits the name of God is a Woman, or the the song God is a Woman. It, it does kind of have a sexy, you know, bass line throughout the song, and the song, or the scent does have kind of a sexy bass line through it. But other than that, that's kind of a stretch. One that we'll talk about that's kind of an overalling career arc is Madonna's Truth or Dare. This fragrance, hands down, perfect for what not only I think Madonna smells like, but the idea of Truth or Dare and kind of everything. Truth or Dare Naked, which I don't even know if you guys can see. You guys can't see. It is right where Believe is. It's right above Believe on that shelf above there. But Truth or Dare Naked... Um, doesn't fit the the era of Truth or Dare and the idea of Truth or Dare as much as the original does. She hit it right on the head. I know that she modeled this after a fragrance that her mom used to wear as well. And my mom loves this fragrance. It is the only fragrance in my entire collection. My mom's actually been like, oh, what is that? I like that. Let, 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 like, let, me, let me see a little more. Like, this is perfect. It smells like sweet tarts to me. It's the tuberose in this. I know it. But... It just, just smells like two, uh, sweet tarts to me in a very interesting way, but is the perfect, like, I don't think she could have done that any better. Another overalling fame 
arc throughout Miss Lady Gaga's career is fame. And I know I misspoke my words and kind of whatever, but this just doesn't fit at all. This to me smells like ba uh, grape baby powder. I know it's unique in the fact that, you know, it is black and then when you spray it, it's clear. But my issue here is the fact that Lady Gaga, especially in the fame and the fame monster era, was so different, so cutting edge and so different that I felt like this fragrance should have been a lot more different. Um, I know that in interviews for the Shock Factor, she said that she wanted to smell like blood, swim blood sweat, and semen. Um, I wish she kind of would have gone in that direction. I know that, like, it's weird, but I feel like the weirdness would have made it sell a whole lot better than just making it a little bit more mass appealing. But that's what she gets for going with a company that wants something to be more mass appealing than it to not be. And the final fragrance we'll talk about is named after a tour. This is Beyonce Heat, the Mrs. Carter Show World Tour Limited Edition. And I could be wrong, but I feel like a lot of these shows were open stadiums tours with this tour. And this is a very pretty, tropical, effervescent, fun, bright fragrance. Um, I, I think this works really, really well with that tour. And just the overall, kind of, the the themes throughout that fragrance um, are very tropical, very bright, very just fun. I know I just kind of repeat myself, but I do feel like it matches the the tour just because it's being everywhere, it's being on vacation all the time, kind of. It is a lot of hard work, but I feel like in a way it's also kind of like being on vacation all the time. So there's there you guys go. If we can talk, Jesus Christ. There you guys go. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, ATHS Perfume, and Instagram, Among the Stars Perfume. I hope you guys liked this video. It's a little bit different from something I've done before, but something I really enjoyed doing and really enjoyed the thought of. I hope you guys liked the editing a little bit better in this video, and I hope, you know, that all looks a little bit better. So, let me know. I'd love to talk to you guys down in the comments below. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.